Let me go back. If I don't do it while I'm thinking about it, I will 100% forget to record. <laughs> I also shared um, a slightly updated document. The one that I sent you is pretty much the same. I just added an annotations for myself and I realized that that could be really helpful for you guys. Um, awesome. Once the tutorial is over. So. I'm gonna um, ask a dumb question to start. Oh, never mind. I found it. I was gonna follow along and I know uh, I, I was just grasshoppers embedded now, but now I, now I see. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Celia Grape is my second screen. So if you were <laughs> slash <laughs> mother or sister, <laughs> sister. Yep. <laughs> Erica, are you on board there? Aha. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we have James with us today to, um, to do our first grasshopper tutorial. Well, that's exciting. So um, if you haven't opened up Rhino and opened up Grasshopper, uh, download this file, get everybody on the same page here. It's Thursday. I woke up 100% thinking it was Wednesday and I was reading an article in the paper, like not even consciously, I was just like, it's Wednesday. And I was reading the paper and they were talking about a statement Governor Wolf made on Wednesday. And I was just like, it took me a full full minute to be like, it's Thursday. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand if that was last week, why are they writing this article now? And then, like, yeah, took me a little time to get on board. Um, that was even like after exercise. It's not even like I just rolled out of bed. Uh, so before we get rolling, what's, what's the news from you guys? Studio, Sierra, you are home? Or yeah, I, that's no. even, even that's ambiguous. Are you in <laughs> with your family or in State College? No, I'm with my family. Yeah, I'm home. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and uh, Erica, are you still with your dad? Are you in Jersey? Freewheeling here. Um, roaming the earth. Elliot, did the, um, did the manhunt end near your parents? Yeah, but I, shit, that, that would have been cool to see. But yeah, it did. I'm still, I'm still at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. But yeah. All right, and studio, you guys hanging in there? <laughs> yes. All right. Um, we got midterms. Is, we got midterms back for Boothby, and I know three of us at least did pretty well. So uh, we're still not sure how that happened, but it happened. Let's just say two of us wrote apology notes to Boothby on our midterms. Um, I didn't answer one of the questions. <laughs> and proceeded to tell him how thankful I am for his review and an apology note. <laughs> um, good strategy, good strategy. <laughs> uh, well, that's good. I'm glad, you know, I, it's, my husband's course is like that. He's, um, everyone thinks they're failing, but it's just, it's really hard, but the grading is sort of reasonable. Um, well, I'm glad you guys did well there. So I'm gonna let James take it away and, uh, and I, I'm gonna play along here on my machine. Great. Um, 
Erica, you weren't here for this, but um, the file in the email from Kathy is pretty much the same as this one, but I added annotations last night for myself and I realized that that could be really helpful for you guys too. So um, this one in the chat is has those annotations. Um, so Grasshopper used to be a plugin for um, Rhino and now it's built in. It's really easy to access if you just type in, oh, I should share my screen. If you just type in Grasshopper in the command window of Rhino, it'll bring up this separate screen and you'll kind of have both of these screens open at the same time. Um, on a Mac, I like, sometimes I like to tile both of the screens um, as like full screen windows. And then uh, I can shift between them, but you don't have to do that. You can make them top and bottom of your screen. You can have Rhino as the, or a Grasshopper as three quarters of the screen, whatever you'd like to do. It is a little bit annoying because Grasshopper will stay on top of the Rhino window. Um, so you might also need to minimize at some point. Um, so from here, if we weren't opening an already um, existing file, you could start double clicking and entering commands and um, bringing things in. Um, but I'll go to file, open document. And open the uh, document from the Zoom link. So now this grasshopper window is connected to the Rhino window. Um, and since I already have a grasshopper named facade tutorial, I'm, it's opening a Rhino window named facade tutorial. If I had other Rhino windows that were other documents, then, and I had associated grasshopper documents, then the grasshopper documents for those documents would open automatically as I switch between the Rhino window. Um, it can be kind of annoying when you're trying to uh, switch between Rhino windows, but keep the same Grasshopper document. You'll just have to like open it. Um, but I try to keep one Rhino window and one Grasshopper window open as much as possible, just because going between Rhino windows can be kind of confusing. Um, so what is Grasshopper? Grasshopper is, um, Grasshopper is uh, Rhino, but the computer doing the drawing rather than you doing the drawing. So um, for example, this first action, this is in these, each of these blocks are um, action. For some reason, Zoom was doing something. Okay. Um, so each of these blocks are actions. So just like I would type in point, this is the same thing. Then for point, I have to specify a point. So I'll go to zero, zero, zero. But I could also specify a point by doing uh, five, eight, six, which is five X direction, six, eight, Y direction, six B direction. Um, and I can do the same thing in Grasshopper. So does everybody see these sliders and points that are already in the top left corner of the document? So um, I've started these first ones for you. If you connect sliders, the first slider with the X point and the second slider with the Y point and the third slider with the Z point, In theory, it should show up. Oh, and right click on the point and click preview. 
it should have a green X that shows the points. Do people see that? It looks like some people are still figuring it out. Is that true? Then the next sliders do the same thing and you'll get a second point. You'll have to right click on point and click preview again. So now you'll see two points. And that's basically like Rhino, but if you're only doing that, if you're only putting in a specific set of points to a specific set of coordinates to get one point, then it doesn't really make sense to use Grasshopper. But Grasshopper is useful if you are taking these points and then you want to be able to slide all of these sliders back and forth and you're creating unlimited, unlimited amounts of points that you can edit. So you can slide it in any of the directions based on the coordinate on the sliders. Um, you can also make multiples of things. Um, so these, if instead of connecting the sliders, we connect these um, lists, the yellow lists below the sliders, the first one to the X, the second one to the Y, and the third one to the Z, we'll get four points instead of the initial one because it's taking 0, 8, 2, and 5, 10, 3, and 7, 2, 7, and 10, 6, 9. Do people have, you see the initial point that's 0, 0, 0, and then the four points from the list. So then we can expand that and we can do more Rhino commands. So if we, we now have two points, we have zero, 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 and um, these other four points. And if we put them into a box, if we connect the first point to the first um, input of the box and the second to the second input of the box and right click on box and click preview, It'll create four, four um, boxes. That's the same as if in Rhino we click, we do box, and we select the first corner, and then we select the other corner. But this does automatically, and we can change the sliders. Does all of this make sense so far? We're just doing Rhino commands, but rather than typing them in. In Rhino, we're typing them in in Grasshopper, connecting the in, the inputs instead of um, clicking on the Rhino screen or typing those into Rhino instead um, as well. And we can change the variables or um, add multiple of the same thing. Does this make sense so far? Okay. So. I'm going to select all of those lists and delete them. Um, and then I'm gonna reconnect the uh, sliders to the points. You'll see as you connect the sliders to the points that um, Grasshopper tries to name the um, sliders as you do that. So it'll say X, Y, Z coordinates. Um, and I'm also on Rhino, I'm gonna just delete all of the um, Rhino specific uh, shapes that I've done but the grasshopper ones will stay because they're still, um, they're still here. So I'm planning on showing three different facade designs um, that are using as many um, skills on grasshopper as possible. Um, so, We'll start with this first one that's kind of um, bricks. 
and uh, we'll be editing, we'll be making sure that the bricks are offset from each other in each uh, course. And then we'll do some depth editing. Then I'll look at, we'll look at um, lattice work and uh, curves. And finally, we'll look at uh, um, kind of shapes and colors that can um, be edited. Um, and I think we'll probably get through the first one today and then the two others on Tuesday of next week. So if we will take this box that we already have and I'm going to set the X coordinate to eight because that's kind of a brick coordinate, eight long by four wide and four high. Um, so this box is our brick. Then to make an entire course of bricks, we'll do um, a linear array. So what I did to add a command was double click on the uh, canvas anywhere and it creates this search box and I'll do linear array. So linear array asks for a couple inputs. Uh, the first one is geometry. So that's what we want to array, what we want to have multiple of. And that's our brick. So we'll connect the B, the output of brick, which is um, the box, to the input of the geometry. And you can already see in Rhino that um, we've created an array. So I showed that you can double click and type things in. Usually the commands are similar in Rhino and Grasshopper and you can just type in the same command as you would in um, Rhino. Um, you can also, all of the commands are up in this, up in the toolbar at the top. Uh, so the um, things like the points and lines and things, the add, addition and subtraction, sets of things and lists, vectors, curves, all kinds of things are up here and you can just drag down as well. So either way will be the same. Um, I'll do a lot of searching because it's a lot easier to find when you're just typing in the um, command. So we've connected one of the inputs for a linear array. The next one is direction. And uh, the third one is count. So direction, we need a vector because vectors uh, show our lines that show direction um, often we'll use unit vectors so i'll do a unit x vector because we want it to be we want the array to continue in the x direction unit means one so this unit vector is going from zero 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 to one zero zero um, and we'll make the rest of the array do that. If we connect this to direction, they'll all get really tight because they're only moving one for each of the bricks. But it has this input, which is factor. So um, if we connect that to the x coordinate, which is eight, then it'll do one times eight. So that's eight. Move eight every time for the new brick. Hold on. Um, what did you type in? You typed in unit vector? Yes. Uh, has unit like X. V. Okay, unit X. Okay. Sorry about that. If you have any questions, feel free to um, shout them out. I think if you type in X2, it's the first one. There are a bunch of shortcuts that I'll try to go over, but You'll learn them as you go. So now let's say that you want, we have this course of bricks that's right next to each other, but in a parametric wall, you might want some spaces between the bricks. Um, so we need another slider. And we'll start by, um, for gaps in the X direction. Um, so we'll double click and we can type in number slider. 
And if I double click on slider, it'll um, show me this pane where I can change all of the options. So I'll change the minimum to zero is a good minimum. Uh, the maximum can be 10. Um, and I can change the name to gap x direction. I can also change from a real value to a um, natural, those are the two that you will, you'll really um, need to use. Um, but that just is the number of digits. So if it's a real number, then you can change the number of digits here too. So we want to, if we just took the gap direct, the X direction and applied it to the unit vector, then it would only be moving each brick by 2.42 or whatever the slider is for the X direction. And that's not what we want. We want it to be, we want it to move the size of a brick and then also the gap. So we have to add them together. So I'll double click again and I can type in addition or I can just type in plus and it'll create a new, um, new Hold action. Hold on a second. A and how, does, how does one break the connection between the X coordinate and the um, X unit box? Um, are you talking about like uh, dragging and clicking? Just if you, if you click something else, if you add something else to an input, the other one will automatically disappear. Okay. Um, later we'll talk about this, but you can also do, I think it's probably control on PCs, but command on Mac and connect. It'll break any connections that are connecting those two things. So if you do command and drag, then it'll delete. And if you uh, do shift and drag, it'll add both of them. But that's not exactly what we want for now. So we'll, we'll leave that, we'll connect the addition instead of those two separate ones and then connect the X coordinate to A and the gap X direction to B and it'll add both of those to the unit vector. So and now we have one course of the, the new box. I didn't hear the beginning. What did you type in to get the new box? Um, so if you double click and then press plus that's addition, mm -hmm. you can also do addition, you like type in addition and Either way, we'll get it. And can you say again what the purpose of the addition function is for what we're doing? Yeah. Um, so for the array, we want each brick to move a certain amount. We want it to move the amount of the brick so that, it's, that they're not overlapping. And then we're also trying to get a gap for uh, architectural reasons. I don't know, you might want uh, light to get through or whatever else. Um, so we have these two numbers. We have the eight, which is the size of the brick, and then the gap, which we're specifying. And we need to add both of those together to get the vector that we want it to move. And the addition just does that easily for us. So it'll take uh, the X coordinate and the gap, add them together and put it as a result to the vector. Um, so now we have a course of bricks, but we need to extend um, in the Z direction. Um, so we need another linear array. I'll double click and type uh, linear array. And now the geometry, instead of being a brick, will be this entire course. We can just copy that multiple times in the Z direction. So I'll connect the output geometry of the linear array of the first one to the input geometry of the second one. And it gets a little bit confusing because right now the linear array is, um, the second one is also going in the X direction. So we need to change the direction input as well. And instead of doing an X, unit X vector, we'll do a unit Z vector because we're trying to go up. So type in Z or unit Z and connect that to direction. And you'll see a bunch of bricks stacked up on top of each other. Uh, 
Um, let's do the same um, the same gap in the vertical vertical direction. I don't know. You might you might have a reason for this, but um, just to practice, uh, I'll double click and I could type in number slider. Another way to get to it is to type in just a value to get in a slider. So if you type in zero is, so just typing in zero, we'll get a slider from zero to 100. But if I type in zero is less than three, it'll make a slider from zero to three. And if I type in zero is less than three is less than 10, it'll make a slider from zero to 10 that three is the start number of. Does that make sense? So if I type in numbers and separate them with less than, I can make number sliders just like editing the number slider um, with the minimum, maximum, and the value. I can do all of that, but type it in at the beginning. And we need to do the same thing with the addition because we have the gap in the Z direction and the Z um, height of the bricks. So we need to add. Um, we could double click and type add. Or I will uh, copy this one that we already have. So I'll drag it and then type Alt and let go. And it'll copy that and all of its inputs. And then we'll change the inputs to the Z coordinate and the second slider and connect it to the unit Z. Does everyone have? Something lo looks roughly like this. Okay. Thumbs up, thumbs down. How are you guys doing? Do we need a pause? Kathy, you're recording this, right? I am recording this. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, at the bottom of this document are the three completed facades um, and like all of their associated actions. So, um, and there are also some an annotations that I'm using to make sure I'm um, saying the right things. Um, and, I, and I hit everything. So uh, if you go down there, you can also kind of follow along with that too. Or after the lecture, you can um, go back and it'll kind of be my process for going through. Um, is so it, now is we it have... helpful? Sorry, I, I just want to confirm. Erica, Sierra, Elliot, where are you guys at? You're good. Okay, sorry. I'm good. I'm also taking yeah. notes. So I'm a little behind, but no. Yeah, time. that's. Um, Elliot, were you able to get on the VPN? No. Um... I can't even get past um, a certain step. It won't let me for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, Is it the point where you have to log in? Wait, it just it just let me know. Okay. All right. Sounds like we're we're as good as as we'll be for the moment. <laughs> Thanks, James. Okay. Um, so we have this array of bricks, but right now, if we look at it in Rhino, it's just stacked on top of each other. We need to move every other bro, row of bricks over halfway so that they actually create stacked bricks. And to do that, we'll copy this array over and then we'll get rid of every other row so that um, the first row is this first array that's like this, the second row is the next array that's moved over half, the third row is the initial one, the fourth one is the moved over one. Um, so to start doing that, we'll just move this array halfway over. 
half one brick plus gap dimension half of that over. So I'll type in move. And the geometry that we want to move is the second linear array. So you can see that it just copied that entire array over. The second thing that it needs is um, the direction and the motion, so a vector. And we have this x unit x vector that's factored by the amount that we want it to move in the x direction for a full brick, but we want a half brick. So we have to take this x, x vector and divide it in half. If I double click and type in divide and click enter, it's the same thing as the addition, but it's, div it's dividing now. Um, so we will connect the unit x vector with A, and um, we can type in, um, we'll type in a panel. There are many ways to do this, but um, a way to just get a number, the easiest way is uh, to type in a panel. So uh, you type in panel and I'll double click and click and add a two and that's all. And now if I connect two to B, it'll take the unit X vector and divide it by two. Then the result will add to um, this, the T input of move. And if you click on them, you'll see that one is moved over. If you click on the linear array, that's the initial one. And then the moved linear array is halfway over. Do people see that? Okay. How did you get the input box? Um, if you click and type in panel, okay, that's just a panel where you can type in anything you want. Um, and that can be text or anything else, but we can type in two into that panel. And then it becomes a two. Another way to do it is to, instead of typing in divide and then clicking enter, you can do divide by two. So slash two and um, connect the unit X vector and B will already have one locally defined value of two. But for now, let's not worry about that. We just added a panel and we can move, we can add, add numbers to um, the B value. And we could have theoretically the used that panel function for the gap X direction for the offset that we used earlier. We could have theoretically yes. used that. It's the same. Okay. Yes. Yep. All of these things are um, the way that I designed it when I was building these facades, but all of this could change. You could do 3D arrays. You could you could make a completely different um, script that created the same um, brick wall in, in Rhino. Um, so we want to have um, the this array for the first row, then the moved array for the second row, then this array again for the first row, then this array for the move for the fourth row. Um, and to do that, we have to get rid of every other row. It's easiest if we get rid of all of the even rows. So we have to move the this moved array. We have to move it one course up because then um, the odd and even rows are off. So it'll be the first row of this initial array. The first row of this moved array will be on the second level. That's where we want it. The second row or the third row of the initial array will be um, on the third row. And then the fourth row will actually be a third row of this moved array because all of this will be moved up one course. So to do that, we'll have to move again in a different direction. We'll double click and type move. And the geometry is this um, geometry. It's already in the Z direction 
but we don't have a specific, uh, we want it to move up one course. And we actually already have a unit Z vector that's factored by one course. Um, so that's this unit Z vector. If we drag it to the T, then it'll move exactly how we want. I'm going to uh, reduce the vertical gap to zero just because it can be easier to see. So this is kind of what we want. We want at the top, you can see that the um, top row is moved over halfway from the row below it. But then other than that, all of them are kind of um, showing all together. Um, let's do a little bit of uh, housekeeping kind of. Uh, we want to, all of these things that are not grayed out are previewing at the same time in the Rhino window. So if we right click them and click preview, it'll turn off the preview of that thing. So this first array was previewing just the bottom set of um, bricks. Let's unclick the preview of that. Then this second array is the first array that we want. So it's the, it's the initial brick. The first move is just moving over and not moving up. So we don't need that one. We can right click and unclick preview. And so if we turn off the first linear array and the first move, then we'll only see one linear array and one move, which are the two we want. Does that make sense? For your second move, how did you get it to move in the Y direction? Uh, we're moving in the Z direction because- of The Z direction, uh, I'm sorry, which- yeah. How did you get it to move that way? So unlike the X direction where we wanted it to move halfway of what we had done previously, we're moving it a full course up. So we already have that from the second array um, where we were moving all of the um, sets um, one course. So we can just take the same unit Z vector from before and plug it into the T. I was misreading it as having connected to the division box. That's on me. Yeah, sorry. It can be a little bit confusing. Um, if you let me know, because you can't do this on my screen, but if you click um, on any of them, it'll kind of show green um, on all of their connections. Um, I got it now. Let me know if something's confusing on my screen. So now, if we're, are we good? Are we at this? Does everybody see these two overlapping grids? Okay. Um, now we'll need to get rid of other, every other row. So that command, there are many ways to do this, but um, I think call um, ent is the, um, maybe the easiest. Uh, so call will, get rid of something and nth means every, every second or every third, whatever number we specify, it'll get rid of that, those, that, that number. So um, right now, as a default, n is set to one locally defined value of two. If we wanted to, we could add a panel and change it to three or something and connect that to the n. And then every third would, would get um, deleted, but we don't need that. It's already two, and that's exactly what we want. So we'll connect the geometry from the second move to L. And this is what we want. We want every other row to be, um, to stay and the other rows to get, um, to go away. But we also need the initial array, every other row of that too. So this is where the shift will come in, come in handy. Um, we'll also connect the G from linear array to the L of the call end. Um, and to do that, we'll click shift and you'll see a new um, thing next to your mouse that's a green plus arrow. If we click, if we let go, then, and we select uh, the call action, we'll see the thing that we want. We'll see, um, bricks that are um, moved a half a brick over for every row. Do people see that? Mm -hmm. 
Now, again, we see a bunch of different things on top of each other. So the only thing we really need at this point is the call. The only thing we need to preview is the um, call because it shows both of those um, offsets. Uh, so we can turn off the move. We can disable the preview of that. And we can disable the preview of the second linear array. And now we just see this, um, this brick wall. Does this make sense? I'm lost somewhere. So they turn dark gray if they're not previewing. Sorry, what did you say? Yeah, I don't know why I had crazy feedback. Um, it, it looks like they turn dark gray when they're not previewing. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So this lighter gray is when something is previewing. The darker gray is when it's not previewing. Um, some things that doesn't matter, like the division, that's not showing anything on Rhino, so it doesn't matter that it's previewing or not. Um, but the arrays and things, you should turn off the preview and it'll turn it up gray. Right. Okay, that was my issue. So are we kind of caught up? Do we have brick walls? Okay. Okay. Erica, Sierra? I'm writing notes. I got yeah. lost at one point. I like looked away for two seconds. Uh, <laughs> if you if you didn't get something and you can scroll down on Grasshopper, um, you could select everything that you see on my screen. So you can select all of these, select all of this. Select all of the things that we've already done. Then click and drag, then tap Alt and let go. You could copy everything that we've done and start from there. The one thing that we haven't gotten to is this uh, one other move. So you'll have to connect the two arrays together, the geometry to the geometry. Oh, and make sure you remember to get the, oh, I added that in the, let's add that right now. Um, I forgot that there's another um, count, there's another uh, input for both of these arrays and it's the count. Uh, so right now it's just the default. Um, I would guess that it's probably 10. Yeah, so it's one locally defined variable is 10. So it works pretty well but our wall might wanna be 20 rows tall or 100 rows wide. Um, so I'll add two more sliders for that. I try to keep all of the inputs that I can change over in the, on this, uh, like all aligned with each other and all in the same spot. Uh, that way, if I change one variable, I can see where all the other variables are and change those accordingly. Um, so I'll double click. Uh, for a number slider, and I'll do zero is less than uh, 20 is less than 30. So this is a number slider from zero with a start number at 20 and a maximum at 30. And then for the uh, Z direction, I'll click and drag, then click Alt and let go and it'll have a second slider. And I'll attach the first one to the first linear array, the N number, which is the count, and the second one to the second linear array N input. 
So you can see that even though those linear arrays weren't the weren't previewing, they input to the move and that inputs to the other move and then that inputs to the call and all of those will update in real time. And it's important since all of these uh, variables are over on one side and you can't really see what they're connected to, uh, to rename them. So if you double click, you can get into that, into the, this uh, panel with the minimum and maximum and you can change the name. You can also just right click once it comes out. Okay. Uh, you can right click on count. And in this first box, you can type in uh, number of bricks long. number of bricks uh, tall. And I think my uh, computer is slowing down because of Zoom and Grasshopper, so I'll just make it smaller. <laughs> the less it has to calculate, the um, faster it'll be, so. Um, so we have a brick wall in the um, X and Z directions. We can change the gap. If we change this uh, number, it'll change the uh, distance between the bricks. And that seems to work well. We can change the box size. So if we want it to be a shorter brick or a longer brick, we, we can change that. And we can change the height or the width. So, so far, this is just a brick wall. Um, I have one more thing to do to it so that in the Y direction, the depth direction, um, it'll be a little bit more parametric. Um, so this will be pretty easy to do in Rhino. You would just take one brick, copy it along, and then copy it up. Um, but to change the depth, we'll do some random values. You could also have a list of values that you wanted to, um, that you wanted each brick to um, move according to. Um, you could also connect this facade with the next facade we do and make the depth according to um, a, so a, a surface. So um, make it a, a, make it bow out in one spot or something like that. But for this one will just uh, make it kind of randomly alter the um, depth of each of the bricks and then each of the rows. So first we're going to um, randomly alter uh, the, the depth of um, this first row. So each of these uh, bricks. And to do that, we'll double click and type in random. Um, and random has three inputs. So the range is the numbers we want. So random, random will provide a bunch of random numbers according to the uh, number of random values. So if we type in 20 here, it'll provide 20 numbers. If we type in 10, it'll provide 10 random numbers. Um, and the range will specify where those random numbers fall. So if we type in uh, zero to 100, it'll be anywhere between those. Um, so let's create a slider so that um, we can specify how much depth we want the wall to have. I'll double click. And um, this time I want there to be a bunch of decimals because uh, it's kind of a small number, the depth, and I don't want it to be a zero or one or a two. It should be, there should be a bunch of decimals. Um, so I'll type in zero dot, I'll just type in zero with a bunch of digits at the end. And then the number slider will automatically have those digits. So then is less than one, is less than 
three. So this is saying minimum start value maximum, but also the number of digits. So three digits after the zero place. And if I click enter, you can see that it's 1.000. And if I slide, I have a bunch of digits. If I double click on the slider, I can change the number of digits here too. So let's right click on slider and change this to depth. And that will be the range. The number, we already have the number of bricks long and we're trying to randomize um, the depth of each of these bricks in the, in the X direction, which is the length. So we can just take the value we already have from number of bricks long and type it in or add it to the end of the random. And the last thing is the seed. So these numbers are not actually random. They're, it's kind of like Rhino has, or Grasshopper has like a bunch of lists of, of numbers that they created from uh, milliseconds on a computer or whatever. Um, but if you always access the same list, then it'll be the same pseudo random numbers. So the seed is what changes the list that you're getting the numbers from. Um, so we want this to be um, a number that changes, uh, but it, it doesn't really matter what number it is. So we can use an existing um, slider and type it into the seed or add it to the seed. And then every time the depth changes, the seed will also change. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, just like we were moving um, the bricks in the X direction and then the Z direction, this time we'll need to move them in the Y direction. So, uh, We'll double click and do Y or unit Y and connect these random numbers, which are the random depths that we'd like to the factor. And then we actually need to move the things. So we'll type in move and we have the vector. We'll add that to T and we have the first linear array, which if we right click and turn on preview is this first row. And we want to randomize that before we add it to the second array, which if I preview that is all of the rows stacked on top of each other. So I'll take the geometry from the first array, this one row and add it to the move. And then after it moves, after it jitters a little bit and adds these random values, I'll take that geometry and put it into the vertical linear array. Does that make sense? So instead of connecting the first linear array to the second linear array, I'll connect the first linear array to the move command. It'll jitter them and then take the move command and apply that to take those moved um, bricks and apply that to um, changing them in the Z direction. And then I'm gonna turn off this first linear array um, preview because we don't need to see that. Uh, we also don't really need to see this move because it's showing just the jittered um, bricks. So I'll right click and turn off the preview for that. Um, and then the last thing that we have to do is right now, the array is kind of, uh, it's only jittering um, once and then it's being extended directly up from there. So um, it's not jittering in the Z direction as well. So we'll need to kind of copy this for the next linear array. We already did we already added random numbers to the 
row of bricks, but now we need to do that to all of the rows. So to do that, we um, will need another random number. Um, we can, a lot of this we're kind of um, taking from these. So let's uh, select and then shift click, shift click the things that we used for the last one. And I'll also shift click the depth. And I'll click and drag and tap Alt and then let go. Um, I've been saying it very specifically like that because if you tap Alt and then drag, it'll uh, add extra space in the canvas, which can be kind of nice. I just added a bunch of space in between here where I can add new commands and then input them. Um, but I think this is probably my least favorite part of Grasshopper, the fact that you have to, uh, like to copy things, you have to click, then tap Alt, and then let go. So I just realized that um, we copied this depth command, but actually we want the depth to be the same as the other depth so that we only have to change one slider to change both uh, dimensions of depth. So we can just delete that and reconnect the initial depth to the R. So this one slider will change R in both, it change the range of the random numbers in both dimensions. The number in the number gonna, of bricks. Are we also going to connect that then to the seed input? Um, let's see. I have it connected to the seed input. We really could take any of these numbers and connect them to the seed. And even the, um, the just the default number on the seed will be kind of fine, but if you want to change the randomness, then you have to add one of the variables. So I'll just, it doesn't really matter, but we'll add the depth to that second seed as well. Um, but right now, both of these seeds are getting the same number. So um, this random number generator is taken from the same list as this one. So we really need to add some number to this uh, this seed input um, to make it so that the seeds are different. It doesn't matter what the seeds are, but if they're if they're the same seed, then it'll be taken from the same random numbers. So Does I can just pull one of the other number sliders down there. Yes. Okay. You could do that. You could also uh, do another addition. So double click and a plus, um, click the, or add the depth to the A, the result to the um, seed, and add a panel that has a random number, let's say six, that's connecting to the B. So that's just creating a random seed. If you if that's not clear, it doesn't, it's not the most important. So just don't worry about it. Um, um, so the last thing we need is the N. Before we had the number of bricks long, but this time we want the number of bricks tall. So instead of the long, we'll take the second slider and add it to the N of the second random. And we're almost done. We have random numbers for the Z direction. We have the unit vector already, which is being factored by those random numbers. And we have to move it. But this time we want to take, um, we want to take this move and instead of um, moving the first linear array, we want to move the um, final linear array we can actually do that with the call. So we'll take the output of the call, which is these bricks, if we remember. Um, we can add that to the G, 
So the geometry of the move, we're moving all of these calls, all of the um, outputs of this call, and we have to right click and preview the move, and it'll jitter all of them in the um, Z direction as well now. Do we see that? I think I have some things that shouldn't be previewed that are, so I'll turn off the second linear array and turn off the call. Okay, are we, do we have a randomized depth wall? This is kind of the, the final iteration of this wall. Um, so wherever you are, let's take what you have and put it back into Rhino. So what we've been doing so far is all in Grasshopper. If you closed all of this and opened this grasshopper window again, it would show up in Rhino no matter what the Rhino window was. So this move is just previewing, clicking on this move is just previewing what we did in grasshopper in Rhino. It doesn't actually exist in Rhino yet. So to get it to appear in Rhino, we have to um, bake it. It's called baking like, uh, like the other definition of baking of uh, like finalizing something. Um, I don't exactly know the definition, but like baking something in an oven. into rice. <laughs> or put yeah. it in the oven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so to do that, well, we have the move is what we want. So we want this exact command, whatever geometry is in this command, to apply to Rhino. So we'll take this command, we'll right click on move and under preview and enabled is bake. We'll click bake and there are a bunch of different options but really none of them matter. Um, so type the, click the layer you want and most of the other ones are just fine. So we'll click okay. And then right now we see both the grasshopper and the um, rhino shape. So let's also turn off Grasshopper. Um, or turn off these actions in Grasshopper. So we don't want to see this move. So um, I'll, I'll right click on the move and under preview is enabled. If I click that, it'll disable this move. So Preview will just show or hide in, um, in Rhino, the preview. Enable and disable will completely stop the computer from doing the action of moving those bricks. So even all of these um, unpreviewed uh, actions, the computer is still doing all of those things. It just isn't showing them in the final Rhino um, or in the previewed Rhino. Um, but if we disable all of them, then the computer won't even worry about it. It won't do any of the calculations. And um, if you have something finalized and you're moving on to something else in Grasshopper, it's good to disable what, you've, what you don't need so that the computer moves faster. So we could right click on each of these and click enable and disable each of them individually, or we could select all of it, everything we've already done, right click not on one of the things that we've selected, but in the blank space. And here we can turn all of their previews on, all of their previews off, enable all of them or disable all of them. And we'll disable all of them. So now if we go back to Rhino, we see this wall and uh, layer four was a bad choice because the green kind of looks like Rhino, but if I change, or Grasshopper, but if I change the color so that it's completely different, um, this is, these are just Rhino shapes. 
So each of them can be edited individually. The entire thing can be grouped or moved or exploded. You can move the wall. So this, this is just um, a separate, like now we could close the grasshopper window and this, these shapes would still show up in Rhino. Does that make sense? Um, so it looks like, I think 1020 is the end of class, right? Sorry, I wasn't on your picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. right, sorry. Okay, um, so I think we can kind of finish up this one and uh, save it. And then if we have a couple extra minutes, I can show um, some additional things. And then next time we'll start on the other two facades. Um, those two facades are um, less complicated, slightly less complicated than this one. So um, we started with maybe the one that looks the simplest, but it is the most complex. Um, so to save it, the grasshopper file will save in a GH file. Um, the Rhino file is 3DM. Um, it'll be two separate files that you can open individually or you can open together. Um, and it's, it's nice to have, to only have to open one. So um, certainly save the grasshopper, but if the rhino is all you need, if you if this is the wall that you want to keep in your final rhino, um, final project, um, then you can save the rhino and open the rhino again, and that wall will still show up once you've baked it. If you haven't gotten to that and you're still working on the grasshopper and um, you haven't taken anything from rhino and put it in grasshopper, We'll talk about this a little bit later, but right now all we're taking is a bunch of sliders and a couple panels and applying them to make the wall. So we can just save the grasshopper, reopen the grasshopper, and it'll show up in Rhino. We don't need we don't need both of them to make to either show the Rhino shapes or show the grasshopper shapes. Um, so I think this is a good way to have it where you can have either. Um, sometimes you'll need to open both at the same time and then you'll open the rhino and then open the grasshopper. Um, but for now, we'll just uh, do command save and that'll save the facade tutorial to wherever you, um, wherever you had downloaded initially. And then separately, we'll click on the rhino window and do command save or control. Um, and that'll save, you might have to save as the rhino because it might be fitting to a different location. Um, this reminds me of one other thing. Because you're working on two different windows, things like undo will work differently. Well, there are different sets of undos in rhino versus grasshopper. So if I undo in rhino right now, it'll undo the move when I move the shape. And if I redo, it'll redo that move. In Grasshopper, if I undo, it'll undo the uh, disable and enable. So this can be kind of nice. You can undo things in Grasshopper way after you've changed a bunch of things in Rhino, but you have to make sure that you're actually on the correct um, screen to make that happen. And it's the same for save. Uh, you'll, you'll have to save each of them by clicking on the screen and then saving. One thing that I didn't do that you, you really should do before um, you save is um, make sure that when you come back to your grasshopper file, you actually know what's happening. So um, when I leave a grasshopper file and then come back, uh, often I won't know exactly what one move is doing, what this linear array is doing versus the other one what this panel is for and the divide is for. So a good way to organize that is to um, group. Uh, so let's start with the, this um, initial box. 
this box is the initial brick. And um, it would be nice if we saw that all three of these things were just making the brick. Um, so if I click on all three, you'll say, see, because they're disabled, they look a little bit different when they're green, but it's fine. Um, they'll still be added to the group. We can right click outside of the three, just on any blank space and click group. And it'll show this purple box. We can right click on that and um, it will provide a space to name. Um, so if we type this group, if we name this group brick, that'll show up here. So you should do that on all of your, um, all of the things so that you can come back and say, this is the brick. So this must be the first point and this must be the second point and then it's creating a box. And you can kind of troubleshoot and understand much easier. Um, we don't need to worry about doing that for the rest of this because um, in the guide down here, I've already grouped it, um, at least how I think it makes sense. Um, so I've grouped it as a brick and then I've grouped uh, the arrays together. I've grouped the randomized depth together. Um, so hopefully this will help you when you come back to this after this um, after today. Um, you can kind of see what everything is doing. And um, to get more specific notes, you can just type in a panel like I've done for all these annotations. So you can double click type panel and then just type in notes. Names. Yeah. Why is none of what you have down in the guides portion showing up in Rhino? Um, so I've turned off all of the previews because um, I didn't want any of the things that were down here to already show up to already mess up your. Um, okay, so if things. I were to go through and turn on previews for all of that, I would see them in Rhino. Yes. But okay. you wouldn't want to turn, you probably wouldn't want to turn on all of the previews um, because that would be previewing the initial box and then the initial right. array. I, right. I just was, a, I was, I was a little confused as to like yeah. why none of that was showing up because like in theory, yeah. anything you do in the grasshopper workspace would be reflected in Rhino, assuming that the exactly preview that. was on. Yeah. Okay. So if I, if I turn on this, this final move, preview, it'll show up over here. Um, so now that we've grouped things, or now that you can see where the things are grouped, um, we can just save them again. And that's all I have. Awesome. Thank you, that was great. Um, I will send you guys the, the link to the recording um, so you can go back and review things. James, thank you so much for uh, joining us for this, this module. <laughs> yeah. For, um, to be our, our um, sixth band member for a couple. So we'll, we'll see you, James, again on Tuesday. And then um, I just uh, uh, pushed him into service further. Um, he's gonna join us also on the draft day because you may not have gotten into your models until then, um, since we have like the wellness day in the middle and whatnot. So he'll be there that draft day to answer or help you with your troubleshooting um, as you're kind of midstream on the assignment. I hope this made mostly made sense. Um, mm -hmm. And look at the annotations and the recording or whatever. And if you have questions on Tuesday about this facade, we can talk about those too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great recommendation if you know, finish this, maybe even try to you know, start from scratch and see if it makes sense. I think that if you give yourself, you know, set aside, you know, 30 minutes, an hour uh, on what's today, sometime between now and Tuesday, 
set aside like an hour to try to do this or something like this. And I think that will help um, bake in what we were learning today. I couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. Um, <laughs> so just uh, that little bit of review, I think will make a big difference between now and Tuesday because we'll add on top of this. Elliot, did you find your way to VPN? So I went to download <laughs> the computer uh, I want to use and then mm -hmm. my Windows security key comes up and I type in the right password and it won't let me in to verify. So I got to figure that out. Okay. Um, isn't there also an option to download? How are, like, James, how are you using Rhino? Are you VPN or, or you have your own license? Um, on Max, I know you can download like unlimited um, evaluations, like free trials, but mm. on Windows, I don't think you can. So you either have to buy a license or use a VPN, I think. Okay. Right now, okay. Um, Rhino 7 just came out a couple months ago. My mm. Rhino 6 crashed on me and I was able to get Rhino 7 for 90 days. So you can do that. Right, because this the school policy has just been VPN if you want access to everything. Yeah, all right. Um, okay, Elliot, let me know if you're, if you're continuing to run into trouble. Um, don't be shy about hitting up AAIT as well. Thank you, sounds good. Okay. All right, guys, have a good next class and um, fit in that review time before Tuesday. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you good, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm just trying to save stuff from the chat real quick. Hmm. So it was, oh, it was. Are you?